Hey, this is Mr. Aiden. We are going on to graphs. Section 4.5, graphs of sine and cosine of functions. So uh, this, this may be a little bit difficult, but stay with me. It, it, I hope that I can make this as easy as possible. A lot of times when I help students out with graphing sines and cosines and trig functions, um, if they kind of just follow my rules, it ends up being a whole heck of a lot easier. So just these are not the droids you're looking for. Um, just follow my rules blindly, and you'll be you'll be good in life. You really will. So, um, so let's first take a look at a graph of sine. So here, let's take a look at f five different points of our sine. So let's take a look at zero, or let's take a look at pi over two. Let's take a look at our pi. Let's take a look at our three pi over two, and let's let's take a look at our two pi. So sine of zero. Remember that's the second value. Sine of zero is zero, isn't it? and sine of 90 degrees, or pi over 2, is equal to 1. Then we're at back at 0. Then we're at negative 1. Then we're back at 0. So these are the five points I want to take along with me. And this is going to be the what we call the parent graph of a sine function. Remember, sine of 0 was 0, wasn't it? Okay. Sine of pi over 2 was positive 1. Then we're back at 0. Then we're back at negative 1. Then we're back at 0. So for all of what we call, what I call the sine curve, for the sine curve is sine curves start at zero, and they go back at zero in two different points. So you can see I put these two different points. Then in the middle, it hits what we call the amplitude, the amplitude, okay, and then the negative amplitude. And then you can kind of just sketch this graph. It kind of looks like a sine curve. It goes back and forth, up and down and up and down and up and down. Okay, a graph of a sine curve. Now, if we took a look at our cosine, okay, so let me change this to cosine. Okay, so I'm gonna eliminate these guys. And so first we took a look at our sine graph. Now let's take a look at our cosine of x. Cosine starts at one, it doesn't start at zero, it starts at one. Okay, then it goes to zero, then it goes to negative one, then it goes to zero and it comes back to 1, and that's one full what we call period of a cosine graph. So you can see the cosine graph starts at 1, and one full period later, so it starts at 1, and one full period later, it comes back to 1, doesn't it? In between, it's at its negative amplitude. And so you can see if I come back 1, 0, negative 1, 0, 1, 1 to 1, and that negative amplitude, and you can see it crosses over 0 in between. And so you can see the graph of a cosine curve looks very similar to the graph of a sine curve, except, I'll do this a little bit better, except he starts at 1 and not at 0. So the graph of a sine curve looks like this. You can see how he has uh, a z 0 points, 1, 2, 3, like that. A cosine graph starts at the positive amplitude. One period later, it comes back to the same amplitude. And that's the graph of a cosine curve. Now we have equations for this. Uh, our equation for a sine is y equals a sine of bx. This a, this a value, is your amplitude, how high that, that graph goes. This b value, whatever is in front of the x, is the period. So period is always 2 pi over b. The period is how much, how much distance it takes or time it takes in order to replicate, to come back to the same point it was before. Okay? You can see in these graphs, this is the graph of y equals 1 sine of 1x. Okay? So our amplitude was 1. Our period is going to be equal to 2 pi over this value right here, b. So our period was equal to 2 pi. So you can see how it made one full revolution in 2 pi radians, okay? And it was only one high. If this was equal to 2 sine, it would be double, it would go higher okay, and lower on the other side, but the period would be the same. This was the graph of y equals 1 cosine of 1x. You can see the amplitude is equal to 1. We're 1 high. We're 1 low. Our b value is equal to 1, which means our period is going to be equal to 2 pi over the b value. So our period was 2 pi. It made one full revolution in 2 pi radians. 
time. So let me show you a different graph. This is the graph of y equals 2 sine of 2x. So you remember, we have y equals a sine of bx. So what is a? a is your amplitude. Your amplitude is going to be too high. Your b value is equal to 2 as well, okay, right here in front of the x. So the period is going to be equal to 2 pi over b, 2, which means the period is going to be equal to pi radians, pi radians, okay? Which means it's going to make one full revolution in pi radians. So this is a sine graph, so let's let's come back to the sine graph. Remember the sine graph, we put, I put one dot at the beginning, I put one dot exactly one period later, and a dot right smack dab in the middle, okay? So use my same thinking. So we start at zero, our period is exactly pi. And remember, it's going to come back through, right in the middle of that, right in the middle of these two points, which is pi over 2. Now, how do I know what where it's going to be in, in between these points? Remember, in between these two points, it goes up to the positive amplitude. Between the second two points, it goes down to the positive, sorry, down to the negative amplitude. So you can see, it's going to go between these two points, it's going to go up two units high. And between these two points, down two units high because that was the amplitude was two. Okay, and now we can finish our graph. We can sketch our graph. Okay, so what you want to do is you want to try to get these two points. Now you can see my graph is scrunched a little bit. You might say, what's going to happen after that, Aiden? Well, it's just going to replicate the exact same graph. So you can kind of copy the exact same graph again. It's going to continue on and on and on and on. It's, a, it's an oscillating function. It keeps going on and on and on and on. Uh, same thing happened on the other side, okay? And it keeps going on and on and on and on and on. And that's the graph of y equals 2 sine of 2x, okay? Now let's go to another example. Let's graph this one. Our graph is y equals 3 cosine of x over 2. Okay, so remember we have y equals a cosine of bx. Okay, so my amplitude is equal to 3. That's going to be how high and how low it goes. My b is equal to 1 half, isn't it? Because that's what's in front of this x, 1 half. So the period is going to be equal to 2 pi over b. 2 pi divided by 1 half, 1 half, which is really like multiplied by 2. So the period is equal to 4 pi. So it's going to replicate over 4 pi. It's going to replicate over 4 pi. So let's take a look at the cosine. Okay, remember what did cosine do? Cosine, I started at the highest point. I came back to the highest point at one period later. So let's do the same thing. We're going to start at the amplitude. We're going to start at 3. We're going to come back to the period. It's, it comes back to the same point at exactly one period later later, which is all the way at 4 pi, which is off my screen, isn't it? It's way off my screen. So I, I, I can put a point all the way out here at 4 pi, okay? Now where is it, let's come back to our cosine graph, where is it going to be in between these two points? Well, it comes to the negative amplitude, doesn't it? So let's do the same thing. Between 0 and 4 pi is right in the middle at 2 pi, which means it's going to be at the negative amplitude here the negative amplitude. Let's take a look what's going to happen in between these two points. In between these two points, it hits my x-axis. In between the other two points, it hits my x-axis. So in between these two points, it's going to hit my x-axis right at pi, which means we're start up high, we come all the way down, we come all the way down here, we, we would keep going all the way back and so on and so forth, okay, forever. Now what's going to happen on the other side? Well, it's going to replicate on the other side. It's going to come back down through negative pi, okay? It's going to be the negative amplitude here at negative 2 pi. It keeps going on and on. So you can see how a fraction but before the x, it really stretches your graph out, doesn't it? Okay, and so that was, we had an example of a sine graph which starts at zero. We have an example of a cosine graph which starts at the positive amplitude.
Okay. Now we have some more equations because there's some more things we can do to our graph. We can, we obviously we still have the amplitude, we still have the period equals 2 pi over b. We can translate that graph with a, this value c that translates it left and right horizontally. And this d translates it up and down. And so we can do some different translations. And so I'm going to show you how I do how I do these graphs, okay? And um, these are the toughest, 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 toughest graphs for a, a lot of students that I tutor, a lot of students that I teach. But I kind of say, if you just follow my method, it really makes it easier. And I like to use this method with a pencil, and I like to use a, um, a pen. Okay, so I'm going to show you the pencil first. So this looks like a really complex function, doesn't it? Okay, so I'm going to make it a little bit easier. I'm going to just call it y equals 2 sine of x. I didn't really worry about this c value, and I really didn't worry about this d value yet. Does that make sense? I'm just worrying about the amplitude and the number in front of the x, which is y equals 2 times 1x. Okay, I'm not worrying about everything else. And really, if you do it this way, it, it will be so easy, I guarantee you. Um, students that I tutor go, wow, that's a lot easier than my teacher taught it. Okay, so I'm not going to worry about all this other crap. I'm just going to go to this first part, y equals 2 sine of x, because I know how to draw that, don't I? I know my amplitude is equal to 2. I know my b value is equal to 1, which means my period is equal to 2 pi over that 1, or 2 pi. It's a sine graph. Where do sine graphs start at? It starts out at 0, doesn't it? Sine graphs go all the way through back to one period later, which is at 2 pi. It hits the middle right in between at pi. Right in between these two points, it goes to my amplitude, which is up 2. Right in between these second two points, it goes to the negative amplitude. And this is, and I'm going to kind of draw this in a pencil, okay? This is what this kind of little parent function lo looks like, okay? Does that make sense? You guys cool with that? Okay, so that is my parent function. I drew that in, not in pen, but I drew that in pencil. Okay, now I take a look at the C value and the D value because this shifts it. This C value, okay, C value, if it's a negative value because you can see how it's negative C, it shifts it horizontally. So a negative pi over 4 means it's going to shift it right pi over 4 units. Okay, It's kind of like, what can x be to cancel pi over 4 out? Positive pi over 4. That's why we're going to the right. d is shifting it up. This d value shifts it up or down. So it shifts it up one unit because it's positive 1. Okay, So remember, pi over 4 pi over 4 is this little just one box, okay, because pi over 2 is two boxes, pi over 4 is one box. So it's going to shift every single point to the right, pi over 4. So it, this shifts this guy over, pi over 4, this guy over, pi over 4, this guy, pi over 4, this guy, pi over 4, this guy, pi over 4. Shifts all my points over. And we're also going to shift it up 1. So it shifts it up 1, up 1, up one, up one, up one, okay? Which means this point is kind of gone, 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 gone. Which means, what does my graph look like? It starts here. And you can just continue on on the other side. And the nice thing is with the eraser, with the pencil part, you can kind of just erase that out. It looks like to your teacher, you never even had to do it. It's gone. Now, if you do the pencil for me, you can leave the pencil and just say, I'm, I'm looking for the pen. Okay? And you can see that graph will continue on and on and on and on. You can see, uh, you can count the boxes. One, two, three, four. You know, so one, two, three, four. We're back here. One, two, three, four. We're back here. Uh, we're down in between right here. We're in between right here. We're continue on. Pretty easy, right? Not bad. Okay. So that's how you graph sine and cosine functions and even much, much, much more difficult functions. We're going to get a lot of practice at this in class. I hope this helped. Get you around. Bye.